we're on public cloud here, so of course everybody's trying to hack it. You see massive amounts of uh, bad actors trying to get into these systems. But on the flip side, the hyperscalers have invested billions in trying to uh, protect customers, as have third-party vendors. So trying to take advantage of those new solutions, which appear all the time, uh, is a is a almost a mandatory thing. You've got to continue to innovate on security. There's a lot of the on-premise paradigms that just do not apply to cloud and should not be used. Every uses like a moat and bridge type security paradigm where you've got everything in the data center, you make everything go through the front door and you put all your security on that front door. But once you're inside the data center, it's considered a trusted environment. There's very little security beyond normal antivirus. Um, you've got to use much more uh, sophisticated uh, concepts and understanding that everything should have its own security built in um, is a big leap for enterprises. Um, and something they wouldn't predict, you know, without the experience of having done it. Getting automation adopted and using automation for all changes is one of the things that is probably the most important miss that most customers have, you know, before they actually make their journey. Um, luckily, once they're on cloud, they very quickly recognize the value of that. And that's what we do. A lot of what we do is help customers get that automation up and running for SAP. The biggest bit of advice is Put automation at the heart of, um, of what you're doing and use it to ensure the best practices or the best practice architectures are adopted and maintained. A great example is of a very large oil producer in the States and they already had migrated to cloud, uh, had been running on cloud for about a year. This is not an uncommon scenario. People who move SEP to cloud but they don't try to adopt cloud for SAP. We could effectively re-platform, even though they're on cloud already, re-platform it against not just the best practice architecture, but also uh, with automation at the core. Now that was a, a bit of a wake up call. They hadn't even thought of this as being possible, that we could automate the operations to uh, allow them to make changes with zero downtime to the business community. It's something that they'd really struggled with in the previous operating model. So for me, that's a great example of a company that's um, basically done the, let's call it the, the lift and shift to cloud without changing the operating model versus actually trying to adopt more of the cloud native features through automation. And, and that's going to be a night and day experience for not just for the, the IT team that's supporting it, but also the functional team that are trying to implement SAP and ultimately to the business users in that company. I see this all the time. If people look at a list price for cloud, they go, okay, this cloud's cheaper than that cloud, and I expect to see whatever X 40%, 30% savings by moving to cloud. And then they get shocked by the bill that happens afterwards. So suddenly it becomes a very dynamic challenge how to manage the budget uh, for IT spend on cloud. However, if you do it right, you get some amazing outcomes. Not only can you get a cheaper unit price, you can have flexible capacity, you can expand and contract when you want to, but even understanding the contractual models that the hyperscalers offer can give companies huge savings. So this is a brand new speciality, which again is a big surprise to customers. Customers are always a little bit skeptical, right? They're always, especially if they've just got the cloud, they're always a little bit skeptical. Is it real? Can it happen? And often they don't want to pay for it, right? So they want to have, um, they want to have us prove it. And that's where, you know, having good partners makes a big difference. So, you know, partners like Intel are, are great at helping us fund these type of POCs where we can prove to customers that it can be done. So once customers see a, a proof of concept working, that usually gives them the confidence to go ahead and, and make the change in a form of a project thereafter. So, you know, I think you, you tend to find with the with bigger partners, you know, like Intel, what they're what they're really trying to do is is help grease the wheels of innovation. They're trying to put resources where they know um, there may be a bit of a blocker, but how can they unplug that to get uh, innovation flowing? You know, I've done a lot of work with utility companies in the past, and I know that obviously their field engineers are a, a big part of the workforce, and obviously where a lot of the work gets done is in the field. But of course, if you're, a if you're working for a water utility, a lot of the times those engineers are elbows deep in mud, trying to fix a pipe or trying to understand what's going wrong in a flooded area. Um, so I was suggesting to the CIO of this company that you know, if, um, if we leverage some of the cloud capabilities, we could put a helmet camera uh, 
that connected to Hyperscaler and a voice, uh, a microphone as well. And we should be able to get, you know, the engineer could look at the part and say, you know, SAP, tell me which part number this is um, and use image recognition to uh, resolve that to material record in SAP, um, which can then come back with a description. All of that could be done with voice, with image recognition, without the engineer having to um, you know, down tools and, and go and find a device that they can work on. That's the sort of thing you have to start thinking about, is um, how can I use some of these amazing capabilities? I mean, speech recognition today is 100 times better than it used to be 10 years ago, um, and it's not available on-premise in any form. It only is available in cloud. So how can you use that to your advantage? And there's always a way to take advantage of these technologies. So, you know, again, it goes back to this point that it's more of a, this is a, re a reality today. Innovation is just ongoing change and things are constantly changing in the world of Hyperscaler. I really love bringing thought leadership, specifically around automation, to customers and seeing them appreciate that, seeing them, seeing the penny drop and, and them agreeing with the, you know, the experience that we're trying to project. So what we're trying to do in Lemongrass is we're trying to continually improve um, the customer experience by leveraging the capabilities these hyperscalers have. My name is Eamon O'Neill. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Lemongrass.